afternoon. Good to see you guys. Move some of my books out of the way. Good to have you guys on. It's lunchtime. I normally don't periscope around this time because people are sleeping. Uh, after they have gotten back from lunch, it is that hour at work where you start counting down that it's time to go home. So I am periscoping and Facebooking live at the same time. I am periscoping from my personal page. I've been doing and transitioning everything to my business page. So those of you guys that are on Facebook who are watching this Periscope from my personal page, make sure that you go like my business page, which is Dr. Faith Wakoma. That way you won't miss any of the other Facebook Lives that I'll be doing. So it's good to see all of you guys on Periscope and all of the people that are jumping on on Facebook. So um, I am Facebooking from my iPad and it's like cutting half of my face off. So I see the comments and half of my face, but that's okay. And you guys on um, Periscope, you're seeing the wall. Now you can see me, right? Okay. We got it. I've been sick, y'all, so I'm just kind of all over the place. I'm getting myself together. Let's see. There's a little bit of a shadow uh, for those that are on um, Periscope. Let's close this a little bit. All right. Let's get started because I don't like to kind of dilly-dally when it comes to content uh, when people jump on for a particular teaching. Let me move my gadgets around a little bit, see if it'll be better for... All right, there we go. Um, I like to just kind of jump straight in. So I was jotting my little not notes as I was... Um, Oh, someone said they had a great counseling session yesterday. Awesome. You guys have been taking advantage of the strategy coaching and counseling sessions, and it's been a blessing. We've been meeting with people from all over the the, um, the world, actually, calls from all over the world. So I was saying I don't like to dilly-dally when I'm, I put up a title. I like to jump right in and, and get going. So this is I'm just going to be sharing with you guys some lessons from ministry, from serving God. And these are going to be some of the things that we're going to hit in our ministry administration course, which is in two weeks from now. Um, I'll share more about that course at the end. Uh, but I wanted to go um, ahead and just do this because I haven't been on for the last two days. My whole house had the stomach flu. So... We are um, excited to kind of be rolling again. All right, lesson number one, lesson number one, the difference between uh, who you work for and who you work with, and not necessarily the difference, but learning, the first thing that's going to be really, really important is that you learn that you've been called to work with God and not necessarily for God. What ministry does is it teaches us that we have been called. Um, oh, good to see you guys in Chicago. I'll, I'll be coming there. Actually, I think April or August. So those dates are good. I'm looking forward to seeing my friends in Chicago. Um, so one of the things that I see happens a lot of times when we launch out in ministry, when we're first starting, or even when we've been doing it for a long time, it's really easy to get confused or to get everything kind of mixed up in that we believe that we're just working for God and not working with God. And what happens if we grow up in an environment that is very gifts based, um, that really celebrates gifts, that celebrates uh, talent, it will become very, very easy for us to begin to see ourselves as someone that God merely uses for his glory. And it's good. God does use us for our glory, for his glory, and he shares his glory with us. However, we need to understand that God didn't just call us to work for him. God called us to work alongside him. And God didn't just call us to work for him or with him. He called us to be sons and daughters. So y'all know that is like my trumpeting message that if you're going to do ministry effectively, not only do you need to know who you're called to work with or alongside, but you need to know your boss. A lot of us get called into ministry or we start different things and we do not understand the nature of God. We do not understand his heart concerning us. And so what happens is we begin very soon, begin to see God as a taskmaster. We begin to see God as someone who's just using us for our gifts. And what happens is we turn from people who are sons working with God to people that are operating as orphans. So what do I mean by when I say orphans or having this slave mentality? What that means is when we do anything for God because we're made to do it or because we're afraid he's going to punish us, we're afraid, you know, he's not going to love us anymore. You're not responding out of love. You're responding out of fear. So anything that we do for God or with God, that is a response of fear. 
fear is that of a an orphan or a slave. And what do I mean by that? When you look at, we have attachment theory in psychology and a kid who maybe their parents left them a long time ago. If you bring them into a new place, they're usually going to do what you say or ask them to do because they're afraid that you're going to send them out again. You're afraid you're, you're going to say you're, you don't want them anymore. Or some kids get into that new place and already act a muck because they just assume that it, because they cannot meet the bar or do what you're requiring of them, that you're already, you already don't want them. So one of the biggest issues I see when people do ministry, plant churches, whatever, whatever, is that they are very gift driven and they're, they're very focused um, a lot on what they bring to the table. And they don't understand that God is not just looking at your, what you bring. He's looking at being in relationship with you and building something alongside you. This is not a task driver and a task worker kind of setting. So one of the first things that you have to do early on is understand that, yes, God is your boss, but you don't just work for him. You work alongside him. And he's not just here because he likes your gifts and that you are, you know, a great singer or you're a great graphic designer. He wants to walk in relationship with you. So that is something that you have to learn early on. I remember in, um, in, in college, when my gift was becoming very evident as someone who was prophetic, I would prophesy all the time and answers would come for people and lives would be transformed very, very quickly. And I started developing this thing because nothing was shifting in my own life. I'm like, God, I'm still struggling uh, um, with finances. You know, nothing is breaking through, but I'm working for you. I'm you know, preaching for you. You're not doing anything for me. And the Lord was like, I never asked you to do anything for me. I asked you to walk alongside me. And as part of lock, walking alongside me, there are going to be opportunities for you to bless other people. And so what the enemy will have you believe is that you're a workhorse or a ta taskmaster. And if you're part of a ministry or you're connected to people that don't necessarily understand the heart of God, um, they, it may just be very driven. And one of the things that the second thing I had to learn was that because I am very driven. My assignment is for leaders. I don't really cultivate non-leaders. Um, so when people come to me, I don't just see that person. I see who God has called them to be and where they're supposed to be. So in my head, I automatically begin to kind of track out, okay, this person needs to work with on this and on that. This person's really good in this area. And so I would have these projects in my head. And one of my daughters early on was like, you know, you're not very relational. You're not very relational. I feel like I'm a project. Like you, you got all these things. And that's